all across the Americas, a new generation of super tall skyscrapers is being constructed as we speak. Even though interest rates keep rising for a 10th consecutive interest rate hike as the country tries to fight off inflation and office occupancy rates are still way below pre-COVID levels, if they aren't really needed at first glance, why are so many cities joining the race to get their first super tall? Let's find out and explore 10 of the most fascinating new super talls. Starting off in Seattle, what could be the new tallest building in the Pacific Northwest is currently under construction. The 4C, or 4th and Columbia, goes back to September 2015, when developer Crescent Heights acquired a plot of family-owned parking garages for $48 million. The stage was set for a groundbreaking 102-story super-tall skyscraper, the first of its kind in the entire region. Designed by Seattle-based LMN Architects, the original plan turned out to be too bold even for a project of this scale. Compared to the other projects on our list, the 4C saw some intense redesigns, as the developers kept looking for the perfect combination. Initially, because the 4C could potentially cause disruptions to air traffic, its height was reduced to 100 stories in 2016, and then again to 93 stories at 314 meters. But this wasn't even its final form. Changing yet again in June 2020, the 4C was renamed the Seattle Tower, with an entirely new design proposed by ODA architects. It stood at 361 meters and featured a large cutout in the building, housing its very own Midway Park. This was designed as a shared space for residents and also as a lookout point for viewing nearby Mount Rainier, inspired by the need for fresh air during the pandemic. Unfortunately, these renders will be the only thing that remains of this stage of the project. By October 2022, the 4C changed architects and plans yet again. This time, Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill proposed a 91-story tower reaching 310 meters and it seems this design is finally here to stay. For the moment, this project has yet to start construction, and there's no due date for its completion. But hey, whenever it gets finished, the views will definitely be worth the wait. The super talls are also coming to Texas. Meet the Waterline, the current contender for the title of Austin's tallest building. Upon its completion in 2026, this skyscraper will climb to first place, but only by a fraction. It'll be a mere six meters taller. Developed by Lincoln Property Company and Carawai Residential and designed by Cone Peterson Fox, this towering masterpiece is set to dominate the Texas skyline from its 311 meter tall throne. The waterline began construction in June of 2020 after years of rumors and leaked renderings, but the suspense was worth it. Its spectacular design features contemporary elements of steel and glass while retaining its connection to nature with floor-to-ceiling windows, warm textures, and native stone, all in order to seamlessly blend in with its surroundings. The base of the tower is lifted 9 meters above the street and supported by sculptural columns, paying homage to some of Austin's unique tree species. Beyond steel and glass, the waterline focuses on community. The developers have made a conscious effort to give back to the city with a pledge of a million dollars towards the Waterloo Greenway project. Being a part of this massive public park itself, the waterline will therefore be surrounded by green open spaces, which not only benefit its residents, but also enhance the overall quality of life in Austin. Suitably named, the waterline will offer fantastic views of the Colorado River from a top-out height of 311 meters. Currently, construction is still at the ground level, with the tower's core already rising from its spot near Waller Creek. Our next entry is also one of the most visually impressive projects on our list. Set to become the first super tall in the entire state of Florida, the Waldorf Astoria Miami was designed to look like a loosely stacked tower of offset building blocks, emphasizing its suspension and height. Nine in total, the cubes will hold 100 stories of hotel space. Designed by Seeger Suarez Architects and renowned Uruguayan architect Carlos Ott, this extraordinary hotel will top out at 320 meters when finished in 2026. Constructing high-rises in Miami has been a complex process for ages. Since it's located close to water and barely above groundwater, its buildings often have to be built on loose soil consisting of sand and limestone. Not exactly helping are the heavy winds blowing in from the open sea. 
When construction began in November of 2022, the developers had to use a special technique to lay the foundation, called deep soil mixing. With that, the soil's density is increased while sealing out any water. The winds are negated by a strong central core, which will be able to handle the torsion while preserving the tower's slender look. The concept of a sculpture that defies the laws of gravity was central to the hotel's design, which is why the cubes are offset. Well, that way, each cube also conveniently offers unique views of Miami, but that's just a side effect, right? Their facades will be flat and wrapped in what's been described as glass skin, achieving a feeling of transcendence, according to the architects. This was also replicated in the interior, with gray and blue shades again hinting at the central idea of something otherworldly. The Waldorf Astoria has been in the works since 2022, and construction should conclude in 2026 or 2027 at the latest. We'll keep you updated, but in the meantime, here's a fun thought. Do you think there's a chance we see the finished building in GTA 6's Miami-inspired Vice City? Just something to think about. I know I will. So before we talk about South America's new tallest skyscraper, let's take a look at the reasons behind their rise in construction. It's actually quite an interesting development. The real estate market for skyscrapers offering office space has yet to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Adding to that, interest rates have hiked by more than 5% between early 2022 and late 2023, only finally coming to a standstill right about now. That's led to real estate firms expecting lower returns on their projects and has made them hesitant to invest and subsequently continue building skyscrapers. But here's the catch. Top flight skyscrapers don't seem to be affected as badly. Reports by some real estate developers suggest that their most modern and luxurious skyscrapers still attract a high demand and sell out completely. So exactly the kind of high rises that we're talking about in this video. But there's more to it than an economic perspective. A super tall skyscraper is also a vanity piece that elevates a city's skyline to a higher level. It represents economical and technological advancement, promotes investments, attracts big business, and even tourism. It's a symbol of power and prosperity. So cities with modern and state-of-the-art super talls become part of an elite club. As such, we can expect that in the future, as cities prosper and grow, more and more super talls will grace their skylines. We see this put into practice in the next entry in our list. The Torre Rise skyscraper situated in Monterrey, a city of increasing population and second in Mexico in terms of GDP. Both the social and economic factors for the creation of a super tall are there, so it's no coincidence that the Rise Tower will likely become the tallest building in Monterrey. At a vertigo-inducing height of 475 meters, it will also be one of the tallest structures in the Americas in general if completed in 2026. Popular year for these projects, huh? With a stunning spire that touches the clouds, the rise will offer unprecedented views of Monterey from its top-level sky deck. Featuring an all-concrete body and uniform design, the Rise is equipped with virtually every single type of space and amenity. For the moment, details on the project are still only being released sparsely, but we'll follow it with great interest on this channel. To never miss out on our future developments, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications. It really helps us grow and keeps you informed. Not all super talls are built to fight overcrowding, however. For some corporations, having their own skyscraper in the right place is reason enough. And for JP Morgan, the right place is 270 Park Avenue, where construction on its new environmentally friendly Colossus continues to stun bypassers. The tower consists of several gradually rising elements that form a stepped construction placed on a stilted base rising 24 meters above the ground. The base will house a public plaza and green spaces as developers have pledged to improve life on the ground and pursue New York's green policies. To that end, they recycled, reused, or upcycled 90% of the waste from the now demolished Union Carbide building. The tower will be fully electric powered with zero carbon emissions, while futuristic tech will prioritize health through improved air quality, biophilic design, and circadian lighting. Fancy. And in a real leap into the future, intelligent technology and machine learning systems will be used to predict, respond, and adapt to the building's energy needs, saving it as needed. Needed. Advanced water storage and reuse systems will cut water usage by 40%. All of this has been planned with the tower's 14,000 inhabitants in mind, but also in pursuit of LEED certification, the world's most widely used green building rating system. In the latest development, the Supertall's framing was completed, with the final steel beam placed at a height of 381 meters. 
As a final step for completion in 2025, work is currently being carried out on the structure for the 41 meter crown of the building. And since we're already in New York's Park Avenue, let's move on down the street where Project Commodore is being designed by SOM Architects. Located in close proximity to the Chrysler Building and the iconic Empire State Building, this super tall tower will stand at a height of 501 meters. The project has already received approval from the Landmarks Preservation Commission, with construction set to begin after the demolition of the Hyatt Grand Central New York. But like all great things, this building has also caused quite the public debate the design has mostly been praised for its harmonization with the iconic Grand Terminal Station, but it's not without its critics. They argue that the Commodore will overshadow the station and disrupt the iconic skyline of Midtown Manhattan. And with these sizes, it's easy to see why. In a similar vein, there are also concerns about the potential loss of the area's historic character. On the other hand, those in favor argue that the proposed renovations to the Grand Central Subway Station will improve circulation and create new passageways for the public. Another positive addition is that its modern design will complement the surrounding architecture while providing much needed office space and amenities for the very busy downtown New York. It just seems that companies can't get enough of high quality real estate. And since the one Vanderbilt is already sold out, the Commodore is stepping in. Now, going back to the debate, and as far as developers are concerned, the new Colossus is a fine addition to the area. Its glass facade was specially designed to mirror its proximity to historic structures, both figuratively and literally, harmonizing with Grand Central Station's traditional style. It's also smart, minimizing glare on the streets below. But no matter which side you're on here, the project is happening. And once it does, Midtown Manhattan will never look the same. Our next entry rests on Canadian soil and is another recurring point of interest for us. However, the one skyscraper in Toronto is making very slow progress as its developers are facing financial trouble. The tower recently reached a milestone, hitting its 41st story and officially and formally achieving skyscraper status at 148.55 meters, but a year behind schedule. The one now stretches over halfway toward its eventual height of 328 meters. It'll introduce 647 residential units to the heart of Toronto, along with a hotel and various retail spaces. But recent news has shown that the one may be in for some financial and legal trouble. The company behind the tower, Mizrahi Developments, has defaulted on multiple debts. It's also being sued by one of its major lenders, a Chinese state-owned enterprise, for allegedly failing to pay its dues on a $213 million loan. In 2022, Apple also sued the developer due to delays, as the tech giant was supposed to have a flagship store in the building. Later, Apple dropped out of the deal. In total, the developers are more than $1.6 billion in debt, while the cost of the project exceeds $2 billion, $600 million more than expected. As such, construction is already a full year behind schedule, while the developer struggles on multiple fronts. Does this mean that the one will never happen like so many other projects? Apparently, it's still on track to be finished at some point in 2025, but it remains to be seen at what cost. We stay in Toronto, where architects Hariri Pantorini are set to redefine the skyline with not one, but six or possibly seven towers. Called the Pinnacle Wanyonga and located just north of the Toronto Harbor, they will become the largest towers in Canada, helping to revitalize the Toronto waterfront. While the initial 65-story Phase 1 condominium tower is already occupied by residents, the Phase 2 Sky Tower is currently under construction, aiming to address increased demand for housing in what is a growing city. The top of the hotel floors at Phase 2 have been completed, and work is underway on a transfer slab as developers prepare to build the condo levels above. Meanwhile, installation of the glass curtain wall began on the second story. The condos will be internally connected by walkways between glass atriums and gathering spaces, creating a unique sense of community for a building like this. Just last November, the Phase 2 skyscraper was granted an extension and is now set to beat the one by a height of 8 meters. And speaking of ensemble projects, there's just no way we can miss the Forma Towers in Toronto, masterminded by legendary architect Frank Gehry. The first of the two giants will be completed in 2028, followed later by the second, which has yet to begin construction. 
The Forma Towers will be the first super tall buildings designed by the architect and will feature two mixed use skyscrapers located at Toronto's 266 284 King Street West. Apart from offering more living space downtown, they will also accomplish another task to further establish Toronto as a world class city while attracting investors, tourists, and businesses. But sometimes, even the greats need to make some last-minute edits. And in the past five years, the Forma's design has been simplified significantly. The towers mix two different patterns on their outer skin. One has an irregular, rippled steel face pierced by rectangular windows, while the other is covered by a curtain of glass. But one key design element unites them both. Light. As Frank Gehry put it, light is free, which is why the Forma were designed to use its abundance to their advantage. By refracting and reflecting the sunlight in various ways, the skyscrapers turn into a towering work of art. In our final entry on this list, we visit the Tribune East Tower Project at 421 North Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Of course, a super tall project is no news to the city that houses more than 1,300 high-rises. But the Tribune East Tower shows that the trend of vertical living continues continues, even in skyscraper-rich cities. Approved in 2020 but without any actual developments to show for it, rumors of scrapping the project are now disappearing amid renewed optimism for its revival. Soaring to a height of 433 meters, the structure of the Tribune East Tower will taper, featuring a glass curtain wall embellished with gold-colored vertical fins. This design ensures the preservation of panoramic views of the original Tribune Tower from the Ogden Slip, one of Chicago's canals. The tower will likely offer a hotel quarter and residential units, providing much-needed space to the city. Originally set to begin construction last year, recent updates will now indicate that February 2024 is a more likely date. But will it ever get finished? Only time will tell. And there you have it. A new generation of super talls is being built across the Americas. Would you want in your city? Tell us why in the comments below. If you're curious to know more about these projects, you can check out some of our previous videos about these buildings right here. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.